Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the Rules Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-1540 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. Further, that the bill be considered read a third time and passed and the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no interfering action or debate. Is there objection? Reserving the right to object. Second. Senator from Oklahoma. Mr. President, I started working on election security with Senator Klobuchar in 2017. The time I served on the Senate Intelligence Committee. We have worked together from the beginning to make this a bipartisan, in fact, nonpartisan issue. Elections are an American event. They're not, they're, they have partisan results, but the act of voting is an American event, not a partisan event. We had a hearing in the Rules Committee. We worked through the process. We continue to get feedback. In fact, she and I worked incredibly hard to be able to reach out to and have multiple meetings with secretaries of state from all over the country to be able to hear as much feedback as we could from the states because elections are run by states. Elections are not run by the federal government. Each state runs their own election. Each county or precinct or parish has its own structure for doing elections. In fact, it's one of the strengths of our system is the diversity of how elections are actually done. So we had to do a lot of work behind the scenes with all these different states and to be able to meet with their leadership, to be able to meet with governors, to be able to meet with as many different groups as we possibly could to be able to get it. The basic goal from the beginning was to achieve a piece of legislation that had a couple of features in it. Ensure timely information sharing between the federal government, state and local officials. Because we learned in 2016, there was not timely information that was shared. The federal government had visibility on what Russia was doing. The states and the precincts did not. And it took up to 14 months for the states to find out what the Russians were doing. That can never happen again. Second thing is expedite security clearances for the state and local elections and officials. Again, we had this issue in 2016 where federal officials saw what was going on by the Russians but said the state individuals didn't have enough security clearance. So instead they got a nebulous memo that said, watch out for these IP addresses with no explanation of why. That can never happen again. And third is a way to be able to verify the results of our election. Again, that should be straightforward. Every state, every precinct should be able to verify that to be able to go back to the people in their area and to say, this is the, what, how you voted, and this is how we verified the number is accurate. There aren't additional ballots showing up later that the machines didn't count that suddenly just popped up from nowhere. There's no hanging chads uh, that are happening. There, there, there's no inconsistencies with that that people can look at it and go, that was done efficiently and professionally. The administration's taken steps in the first two of these. In fact, we've had multiple hearings with DHS to be able to talk about what they're doing to be able to get security clearances. Now, every single state has individuals within their state that has security clearance. Every state has a greater cooperation now with the federal government. Multiple layers of cybersecurity have been offered to every single state so that each state can use their own cyber protection or add an additional layer from the federal government. It's up to that state to choose. It's not a mandated piece that comes down on them. Most every state has taken that though and have said we want to be able to have those additional layers of cyber protection because it's not just about the voting machine or it's not just about the piece of paper, it's how it's counted, how it's presented, how the unofficial results even go out from the state the night of the election. All those things matter. DHS has leaned in and they have done aggressive work on this in the last several years. That's why the 2018 election went so smooth, because DHS has done a tremendous amount of work already on this. I've been clear though through this process this cannot be a way of federalizing elections and trying to be able to run the elections or a, a, every piece of election equipment has to be uh, run through some bureaucracy here in D.C., whatever it may be. This is a state responsibility that the state has to be able to take on. There is not a way for the states that do not have an election system, piece of hardware right now for their election, to be able to change that hardware before 2020. The first of our elections are not November 2020, it's eight months from now. Eight months from now is when our primaries begin. States cannot purchase the equipment, 
put into place, train the volunteers, make that transition before the 2020 election. So the emphasis is, what can we do to be able to assist states in their cyber protection? What can we do to be able to get information to them? How can we run this? Now, in the days ahead, Senator Klobuchar and I completely agree. Every state should have a system with a backup paper ballot. Every state, every precinct. Right now, that's not so. But no matter how much money we threw at the states right now, they could not make that so by the 2020 presidential election. It's not possible to be able to get there. In the 2018 omnibus, we added $380 million to go to the states. Not all of that $380 million has even been spent yet. There's still quite a bit of it that's still banked. But that has all been allocated to the states, and the states are deciding what's the best way to do that. States like mine in Oklahoma, we use optical scanners and paper ballots. That money was used in my state to be able to assist in cyber protection of the system, the transition of the information, and how the unofficial results actually get out to the public. It was a good way to be able to use those funds to be able to make sure any threats are being mitigated. My state, like 21 other states, was one of the states that the Russians tried to engage in our election systems. They came to the state election board in my state, tried to be able to get into it, found out the door was locked, and they moved on to another state. They did not get into our system. But there are other areas where we could protect it. But of that $380 million that we allocated just last year, much of it has not even been spent yet. So I object to doing another $380 million on top of that when the first part of it has not even been spent yet, and it won't be eligible, or it won't make a difference in this year's election because the $380 million we did last year was really preparing for the 2020 elections. Here's my concern long term. I don't want election security to become a partisan issue. It's easy to become that. H.R. 1, when it came out of the House, was clearly a very partisan bill. I find myself at odds today with a partner in this, Senator Klobuchar, who we have worked together in a very nonpartisan way to be able to resolve this issue. I think we still can resolve this and that we can actually get a result, but a partisan proposal will not get us an end result where both parties come together and get to resolve this. I reiterate again, election security should never be a partisan issue. This is about the preservation of our democracy, and it's something both parties, in fact, independents, Republicans, Democrats, all parties, agree that this should be a central issue for us. So stating all of that, begrudgingly, in this proposal, because it's not a bipartisan proposal, I look forward to working through and getting a bipartisan proposal done in the days ahead, so I must object.